Alright, gonna do a video on how the body of flesh is corrupt and sinful, and further refuting this Luciferian heresy of sinless perfectionism. So let's get right into the scriptures. First of all, God clearly told Adam that he would die if he ate of the tree, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 to 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. When Adam and Eve sinned, God cursed the ground where Adam stood and told him that he would die a physical death. Genesis chapter 3 verses 17 to 19. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also, thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat uh, the herb of the field. And in the sweet sweat of thy face thou shalt eat, shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So he's going to die a physical death. Why? Because he sinned. Before he wasn't going to have physical death. If he ate of the fruit, of the, if he ate of that fruit, he wouldn't die. But guess what? He ate of that fruit. He sinned. Because the wages of sin is death. Romans chapter six, verses twenty-one to twenty-three. What fruit had ye then had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed, for the end of those things is death. So the end of those yeah, end of those things is death. Uh, but now being made free from sin and become the servants to God, and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. James chapter one verses thirteen to sixteen. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted, when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. So the wage of sin is death. The result of sin is death. And why do humans experience sickness? Why do humans experience disease? Why do humans experience physical death? Because we have a body of sin. We are not sinless. We're not born sinless, like the Luciferian heresy of sinless perfectionism would say. King Asa, in his old age, King Asa was a, King Asa was a right was a righteous man. He did righteously, and in his old age, he had sickness and disease, and it was because he, as a righteous man, still had a body of sin, had a body of sinful flesh. First Kings chapter fifteen verses twenty three to twenty four. The rest of all the acts of Asa, uh, and all his might, and all that which all that he did in the cities, in the, and the cities which he built, are they not are they not written in the in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? Nevertheless, in the time of his old age, he was diseased in his feet, and Asa slept with his fathers and was buried with the fa with his fathers in the city of David his father, and Jehoshaphat his son reigned in his stead. So he had sickness, he had disease in his feet. But he was still a righteous man. You read First Kings sixteen, he or First Kings fifteen, he did righteously in the eyes of God. But guess what? He still had sickness. Why? His body of sinful flesh. Second Chronicles chapter sixteen verses twelve to thirteen. And Asa, in the thirty and ninth year of his reign, was diseased in his feet, until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. And Asa slept with his fathers, and died in, in the one and fortieth year of his reign. He still had sickness. He was a righteous man. However, he, didn't, he, didn't sought, he sought not to the Lord. He sought to the physicians to try to cure his sickness. And what happened? He slept with his fathers. He died. He went down to Abraham's bosom and slept with his father. That's what it's referring to when it says slept with his fathers. They go down to Abraham's bosom and start sleeping. Uh, they didn't go to heaven in the, in the Old Testament. Nobody could go to heaven in the Old Testament prior to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ happening. 
whole other issue. I covered that in my video on Abraham's bosom. But he died of old age and he died of a disease. A righteous man here, but he still had sickness. Why? Body of sinful flesh. Same was the case with King Elisha. 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 14. Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died. And Josh, Josh and jo, Joash, hope I'm saying that right, the king of Israel came down unto him and wept over his face and said, O father, O my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. So he was fallen in sickness too, king of Israel. When David reached old, when David, when he reached old age, uh, it was taking a toll on his health as well. And that's because he had a sinful, corrupt body of flesh as a righteous man still. First Kings chapter one, verse one. Now King David was old and stricken in years, and they covered him with clothes, but he uh, he got no heat. Okay, he was stricken in old age. He had a body of, of death, essentially. Death was, was working in him because he, had a, he was born in that sinful, Adamic nature. Same was the case with Joshua, another righteous man. Joshua chapter 23, verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass... It came to pass a long time after the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about, and Joshua, and that Joshua waxed and waxed old and stricken in age, and Joshua called for all Israel and for their elders and for their hands, heads and for their judges and for their officers, and said unto them, I am old and stricken in age. Uh, Paul mentions a fellow brother in Christ, a saved brother in Christ, who is a saved man, a Christian you know, as the common term is called, uh, who became sick and died from that sickness. That happened because, even as a saved Christian, that man still had a body of flesh, a body of sinful flesh. Philippians chapter 2, verses 25 to 27. Yet I suppose it necessary to send unto you Af Aphroditeus, hope I'm saying that right, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger, and he that mis ministered to my wants, for he longed a for he longed after you all. He was and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick, for indeed he was sick nigh unto death. But God had mercy on him, and not unto him only, but on me, but on me, lest I should should have also sorrow upon sorrow. Brother in Christ there, but he was sick. He was a saved man, but he had a body of flesh, a body of corruption, like it talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 44 to 54. Your body is not redeemed till the rapture. Um, Paul mentioned that there are many among the Corinthian church that were weak and sickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. 28 to, yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Just want to make sure I had the right re verse reference. Let a man examine himself, and so let him let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. So they're weak and sickly among you. Who's he talking to? Save Christians among you. They're weak and sickly. Paul himself gave health advice on stomach infirmities. First Timothy chapter five, verse twenty three. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake, and thine often infirmities. It also makes a problem for all the charismatic, you know, fake healers out there who try to try to say the apostolic sign gifts are here for today. Okay, then why didn't Paul heal the sickness? Why didn't he heal the stomach infirmities? Why did he leave uh, the other fellow laborer sick at Miltium? Because the, the apostolic sign gifts went away at the complete canon of the scripture, and even during the time of the apostles. We don't use sign gifts today. We walk by faith, not by sight. Whole other issue. Uh, Paul himself also struggled with infirmities. Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verses seven to ten.
and least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations there was given to me a thorn in the flesh the messenger of Satan to buffet me lest I should be exalted above measure for this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee for thee for my strength is made is made in perfect in weakness more gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me therefore I take pleasure Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am, I am weak, then I am strong. So Paul himself, the apostle, the apostle of the Gentiles, he had infirmities. He had sickness too. So what do you think an infirmity is? It's a sickness. It's an illness. It's a problem you have. So it just totally refutes this, this heresy of, of this Luciferian lie of sinless perfectionism. You know, saints can have health problems. And why? Because you have a body of flesh. You have a body of corrupt flesh. Like, like Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 to 21, you know, we have vile bodies. Romans chapter 8, verses, I think it's 5 to 11, and Romans chapter 8, verses 21 to 25, shows we have bodies of corruption. We have bodies of sinful flesh. You know, you, you're not going to be sinlessly perfect in this on this side of eternity. It's that simple. Sinless, perfection, sinless perfectionism is a Luciferian heresy. And it's from... It's from the pit of hell, first of all. It's also from Satan. It's a lie from Satan, basically. It's nothing more than just Satan's lie of ye shall be as gods in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, compared with, you know, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 14. So I want to show you guys that. Don't be deceived by the Luciferian heresy of sinless perfectionism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.